Hey, welcome back everyone to Bam Bam Print. I'm Nick, and in this series, I'm excited to be diving deeper into the advanced features of Bamboo Studio. In this multi-part series, I will explore a variety of settings and options that can significantly enhance the quality and precision of your prints. Today, we'll start by looking at the advanced settings that allow for fine tuning of wall orders, infill settings, bridge flow, and more. So grab a cold one and let's take your 3D printing skills to the next level. If you haven't already gone through my beginner tutorial, I highly recommend you pause this video and go through that first. It lays out the foundation of Bamboo Studio. You'll be much more prepared for all of the advanced information that we'll learn about in this tutorial. All right, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that you turn on the advanced mode. You can do this by hitting this button right here. Once that is done, you'll see your screen change and you will now have access to all of the settings in the process window. With the advanced mode turned on, the quality tab adds quite a bit of new features in Bamboo Studio. We have some new categories being displayed as well as having some of the previous categories with some new options. In Bamboo Studio, the line width feature is an essential tool that allows you to control the line width of the extruded lines for different parts of your 3D print. This feature can significantly affect the strength, accuracy, and appearance of your prints. Starting with a default line width in Bamboo Studio, it is typically set to 0.42 millimeters. This slightly wider line width helps ensure better layer adhesion and dimensional accuracy, making your prints stronger overall. Although it might slightly reduce the detail resolution, it enhances the print's overall strength. For the initial layer, Bamboo Studio allows the line width to be set wider. This wider line width helps the first layer stick better to the build plate, preventing issues like warping or lifting during the print. A strong first layer is crucial as it sets the solid foundation for the rest of the print. Moving on to the outer wall line width, Bamboo Studio lets you adjust this to improve the detail and surface finish of the print. A narrower line width is often used for the outer walls to achieve higher detail and smoother surface, though it might slightly reduce the outer wall strength. Adjusting the inner wall line width in Bamboo Studio helps enhance the print's overall strength without affecting the appearance of the outer wall. This means that you can make the inner walls thicker to support the structure better while keeping the outer walls thin for detail. For the top surface, Bamboo Studio lets you adjust the line width to improve the surface quality. A narrower line width can be used here to ensure a finer and smoother top surface, which is important for the overall look of the print. When it comes to sparse infill, the line width in Bamboo Studio can be adjusted to make the print faster and use less material while still providing adequate internal support. This means that you can set the infill lines wider apart and save on filament and time. For internal solid infill, Bamboo Studio allows you to adjust the line width to maximize the strength and rigidity of your print. Lastly, in Bamboo Studio, you can adjust the line width for supports to make them easier to remove after printing while still providing the necessary support during the print. This flexibility helps in achieving clean prints with minimal post-processing. By understanding and utilizing these settings, you can fine-tune your 3D prints for better quality strength and efficiency. For the most part, these settings can be left on default. However, if you're experiencing under and over extrusion issues, then this is where you may want to make minor adjustments. Another crucial aspect to consider for improving the quality of your 3D prints is seam settings. The seam section has options to significantly affect the appearance of your final product. In our beginner tutorial, we covered the seam position option, which allows you to control where the seam of each layer starts and ends. This setting is useful for hiding the seam in less noticeable areas of your print, enhancing its visual appeal. Now let's dive into the scarf joint seam feature, which is still experimental, but offers exciting possibilities. Here's how the scarf joint seam works. A scarf joint seam is a technique used in 3D printing to hide the seam lines where each new layer starts and ends. These seams can be particularly noticeable on curved or intricate surfaces. The scarf joint seam works by blending these seams into the natural contours or internal features of the model, making them less visible. The scarf joint seam helps by hiding the seams more effectively, making your prints look smoother and more professional. There are three options under this setting, none, contour, and contour and hole. First, if you select None, the Scarf Joint Seam feature is turned off. Next, we have Contour. When you choose Contour, the seam is blended into the natural lines of your model. This means the seam follows the curves and contours of your print, making it less noticeable, especially on curved surfaces. This option is great for improving the aesthetic quality of your prints by minimizing the visible seam lines. Lastly, the Contour and Hole option takes the seam blending even further. It not only blends the seam into the contours of your model, but also into any internal holes or cavities. This is particularly useful for complex design with lots of internal features, as it hides the seams within these internal structures, resulting in an even cleaner finish. By understanding and utilizing the scarf joint seam settings, you can significantly enhance the visual quality of your 3D prints. I always feel that experimenting with these options will help you find the best settings for your specific models and printing needs. 
allowing you to achieve smoother and more professional looking prints. Now before we move on any further, let's do a quick comparison test. I added three primitive cylinders for this test. The first cylinder has scarf joint seam turned off. The second has a contour option turned on with its default settings. The third has a contour and hole turned on with its default settings. Now before I send this to the printer, let's take a look at the G-code so we can see what's happening here. After slicing the model at first glance, the three models don't look much different. But if we change our view from line type to flow, you will see where the changes will affect this test. Let's go ahead and move down a ways on the layers and view the G-code. As you can see, the printer will change the flow rate of the filament gradually. This layer blending should make the seam less noticeable by effectively spreading the seam out over a specific distance, 10 millimeters by default, effectively making it less noticeable. All right, let's go ahead and send these three models to the printer and see what the results are. The results that we got from the tests are basically what was expected. The default no scar seam shows the usual indentation of the seam around the entire model. When we view both the contour and the contour and hole tests, we have a much less noticeable seam. Both tests yield basically the same results as it's hard to see a difference. I'm guessing with a much more thorough test of the settings, we can push this even further. So I'll go ahead and add this comparison test to a future video. Now that we covered the scarf joint seam feature, let's move on to another important aspect of fine tuning your 3D prints, the precision section in Bamboo Studio. This section offers several settings that can significantly improve the accuracy, strength, and appearance of your prints. First, we have the slice gap closing radius. This setting determines the size of the gaps that the slicer will close automatically. It is useful for making sure small gaps in your print are filled correctly, preventing unwanted holes or weak spots. For example, if there's a very tiny gap between the walls of your model, adjusting the setting helps the slicer bridge those gaps, resulting in a stronger print. This is especially important for those parts that need to move or fit together precisely. Next, the resolution setting controls the level of detail in your print. Higher resolution means finer details, but it also increases the print time. The setting is important for getting sharp edges and well-defined features in your models. Lowering the resolution can result in smoother surfaces, but it also might reduce the detail, especially on intricate parts. Finding the right balance can significantly impact the quality of your print. The arc fitting feature allows the slicer to convert straight line segments into arcs where possible. This leads to smoother curves and circles in your print, reducing the number of short, straight segments the printer needs to handle. By fitting arcs, the printer can move more smoothly, which can improve both print quality and speed. This is particularly beneficial for models with lots of curved surfaces, enhancing the overall look of your print. This feature is set to on by default, and I would recommend leaving it that way. The XY hole compensation adjusts the size of your holes in your model to account for the material that may overextrude or underextrude, affecting the hole size. This setting is crucial when precise hole dimensions are needed, such as for fitting screws or dowels. It ensures that the holes are neither too tight nor loose by adjusting the parameter lines around them, making sure that your parts fit together as intended. Similarly, XY contour compensation adjusts the dimensions of the entire outer contour of your print. This setting helps maintain the exact size of the external features, ensuring that the printed object dimensions match the design specifications. This compensation is particularly important for functional parts where accuracy is essential for the final assembly. Elephant foot compensation addresses the issue where the first layer of the print are slightly wider than the rest, causing a foot effect on the bottom. This is often due to the weight of the upper layers pressing down while the material is still soft. Adjusting the setting can help ensure that the bottom layers are the same width as the rest of the print, resulting in a more uniform and aesthetically pleasing model. Lastly, the precise Z-height setting fine-tunes the layer height accuracy in the Z-axis. This is crucial for prints that need high precision in the vertical dimension. Ensuring accurate Z-height settings can improve the layer adhesion and overall print quality, especially for models that need to fit together precisely or have detailed vertical features. By understanding and using these precision settings, you can fine-tune your 3D prints, achieve better quality, strength, and efficiency. Experimenting with each of these options allows you to find the best configuration for your specific printing needs, ensuring your product meets your expectations. Now that we've explored the precision settings in Bamboo Studio, which helps improve the accuracy, strength, and appearance of your prints, let's move on to another essential feature, the ironing section. This feature can significantly enhance the surface quality of your 3D prints, giving them a smoother and more polished finish. The ironing feature in Bamboo Studio focuses on improving the top layers of your 3D prints. It has several options that determine where and how the ironing process is applied. In a previous video, I thoroughly explained the ironing feature. My ironing comparison video takes this further by conducting real-world comparison experiments to demonstrate all the ironing settings. I'll quickly review the ironing settings here. 
but for a deeper understanding, I recommend watching the detailed overview in my earlier video. This way you'll get a full picture of how the settings impact your 3D prints. Using the ironing feature in Bamboo Studio offers several benefits. Ironing helps create smoother top layers by using the print head to pass over surfaces without extruding more filament. This flattens and smooths out the layer lines, resulting in a polished finish. For parts that need to fit together tightly, such as lids or joints, a smoother surface can ensure a better fit and more reliable performance. However, it's important to note that using the ironing feature will increase the overall print time. The first option we have is no ironing. When you select this option, the feature will be turned off, of course. Next is top surfaces. This option applies to ironing to all top surfaces of the model. This means that the surface on the top of an internal or external structure will be smoothed out. This option is useful for models with multiple top surfaces where you want a consistent finish across all of them. Choosing topmost surfaces will only iron the very top layer of your print. This is ideal for prints where you only need the uppermost layer to be smooth such as the top of a box or a figurine. It helps ensure that the final layer is polished and free of any imperfections. The All Solid Layers option applies ironing to every solid layer in the model. This includes not just the topmost surface, but any layer that forms a solid part of the print. This setting can greatly improve the overall surface quality of the model, making it appear more uniform and reduce the visibility of the layer lines. By understanding and utilizing the ironing setting in Bamboo Studio, you can achieve higher quality prints with smoother and more professional looking surfaces. Experimenting with these options to find the best settings for your specific printing needs will ensure your final product meets your expectations. Once you select one of the ironing features, you will be presented with the additional settings. The ironing pattern is going to be the pattern that is used to flatten out the surface. You can choose rectilinear and concentric. You can also adjust the ironing speed, flow, and line spacing. The default setting tends to give great results, but experimenting may give you some increased results. Having explored the ironing feature and its impact on the surface quality of your prints, Let's move on to the next crucial feature in Bamboo Studio, the wall generator. This feature determines how the walls of your model are constructed, which can significantly affect the strength and appearance of your prints. The wall generator feature in Bamboo Studio has two main options, Classic and Arachne. Each option uses a different method for generating the walls of your 3D print, offering distinct advantages depending on the specific needs of your project. First, we have Classic. The Classic wall generator uses the traditional method for creating walls in 3D prints. This method lays down walls in a straightforward manner, ensuring consistent thickness and strong layer adhesion. The classic approach is reliable and works well for most standard prints, providing a balance between print quality and speed. For example, if you're printing a sturdy box or a mechanical part that needs to be consistent wall strength, the classic wall generator will ensure that the walls are uniformly thick and strong, providing reliable performance. Next is Arachne. The Arachne wall generator uses the more advanced algorithm to create walls that adapt to the contour of the features of the model. There is a lot to cover, so I'll be creating a completely separate video about the Arachne feature. This will allow me to give comparison results and provide a much more in-depth look with Arachne. But for now, I would still like to give a detailed look at what the Arachne feature is all about. This method can create variable wall thicknesses, which helps in optimizing the print for both strength and material usage. The Arachne option is particularly useful for complex models with detailed features as it can produce smoother curves and more accurate dimensions. For instance, when printing a detailed dinosaur skull or a model with complex curves and fine features, the Arachne wall generator can adapt the wall thicknesses to fit the model's contour, resulting in smoother and more accurate print. The Arachne wall generator includes several additional features to enhance the capability and handle complex prints. The wall transitioning threshold angle determines that the angle at which the wall thickness transitions from one thickness to another. This setting is particularly useful for prints with varying angles and curves, allowing for smoother transitions and better adherence to the model's design. The wall transitioning filter margin helps to smooth out transitions between different wall thicknesses. It acts as a buffer zone, ensuring that the abrupt changes in thicknesses are minimized, leading to a more even and aesthetically pleasing surface finish. Wall transition length controls the length over which the wall thickness transition occurs. By adjusting this length, you can ensure that the transitions are gradual and smooth, reducing the risk of weak points and visible lines in the final print. The wall distribution count determines how many walls are distributed around the perimeter of the model. Higher counts can prove additional strength and stability, while lower counts can reduce the print time and material usage. Minimum wall width sets the minimum width that the wall can have. This feature is crucial for ensuring that even the thinnest parts of your model have enough material to maintain structural integrity, preventing issues like breakage or warping. Lastly, the minimum feature size setting defines the smallest feature that the printer will attempt to replicate. This is important for maintaining detail in complex models, ensuring that the small features are accurately printed without being lost or smoothed over. 
I would like to point out that I understand this is quite a bit of information to digest. Remember that Bamboo Studio will also give you tips if you hover over each option. After covering the wall generator feature and its impact on the strength and appearance of your prints, let's dive into the advanced section in Bamboo Studio. This section includes several features that give you more control over how your 3D prints are created. These options allow for fine tuning of wall orders, infill settings, bridge flow, and more, ensuring you achieve the best results for your specific projects. The order of walls feature allows you to choose a sequence in which the walls are printed. There are three options, inner, outer, outer, inner, and inner wall, outer wall, inner wall. When you choose inner outer, the printer lays down the inner walls first, then the outer walls. This can provide better adhesion between the walls and the infill, making the print stronger. Conversely, outer inner prints the outer walls first, then the inner walls, resulting in a smoother exterior surface as the outer wall is printed with less disturbance from the subsequent layers. In inner wall, outer wall, inner wall option prints the inner wall, then the outer wall, and another inner wall enhancing structural integrity by reinforcing the outer wall and additional inner support. The print infill first option, when selected, ensures that the printer lays down the infill before printing the walls. This can help improve adhesion between infill and the walls, resulting in a stronger overall print. This is particularly useful for models that require robust internal structures. Bridge flow controls the amount of filament extruded when printing bridges. Bridges are horizontal structures that span gaps in the print without supports beneath them. Adjusting the bridge flow can help ensure that these sections are strong and well formed, reducing the risk of sagging and drooping. Complementing this, the thick bridges feature reinforces the bridges by making them thicker, providing additional support and reducing the likelihood of a failure during printing. Thick bridges can help maintain the shape and strength of a print, especially in areas that span large gaps. The only one wall on top surfaces option controls whether only a single wall is printed on the top surfaces of a model. There are three settings, top surfaces, not applied, and topmost surfaces. Top surfaces applies to all surfaces. Not applied means the feature is not used, and the topmost surfaces applies to only the very top surfaces of the print. Using this can save material and print time while still providing a smooth finish for the top layer. The only one wall on first layer feature ensures that only a single wall is printed on the first layer of the model. This can improve bed adhesion and reduce risk of warping, as there is less stress on the first layer. Finally, the avoid crossing walls option instructs the printer to avoid crossing over walls during travel moves. By minimizing the movement of the print head across printed walls, this feature helps reduce sagging and improves the overall surface quality of the print. Alright, and that concludes the first video in my advanced settings tutorials. My goal was to provide as much detail in a small bite-sized video because I know your time is valuable. Also, there are still a ton of viewers out there that have not yet subscribed to my channel. If this video was valuable to you, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I promise that I'll keep producing quality video tutorials for you in the future. If you'd like to say hi or have a question about anything in the video, please do so in the comments. I make a big effort to respond to everyone. Again, my name is Nick. I hope you had a great day and happy printing.